in the memory hole. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <clears throat> Aww. <laughs> That's how it is, man. Dude, man, always a pleasure. Hell yeah. Hi. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, that's right, man. Yeah, the club is going up on a Wednesday tonight. I'm been waiting to say that. And it not <laughs> Anyways, um, okay. So last night, man, totally my fault. Um, we we used the Torch Talk TV account as a backup in the past, and that was really just a test account to um we were just trying to figure out if like background music was gonna fuck up the uh, the the real account and anyways the torch talk one was never set up properly so it wasn't archiving that broadcast and youtube fucked up and so it's just you know a bunch of errors on top and then i screwed up because i was just rushing to get that show on whatever but it didn't sit right with me and here we are we're gonna do the motherfucker again so, and we're going to do it better, actually, because uh, last night we just showed you how to make the multi-board tubing. Today I hopped in the studio and made uh, this sweet piece of kit. It's actually a multi-board uh, martini slide. You can see the holes there. I think they go right through. And yeah, it's like, man, any, any of y'all old school smokers out there know this style, man, like sovereignty style, whatever, you know, they got a little horn. And at the end of the evening, we're going to go ahead and give this away uh, to one of y'all viewers. So, fuck yeah. Um, nah. What's up? Um, what? It sounded good over here. Yeah, yeah it sounds it... like we can all hear each other, but apparently think, my uh, audio uh, and Adam's audio is not. Okay, I think, it's, I think it's fixed now. It wasn't coming through. It was just maybe picking up my microphone. Sorry, dogs. Um... <laughs> That's how it goes in Torch Talk land. I don't know why that was clicked. <laughs> Fuck. All right, all right, all right. But now we should be good. Yeah. What's up, YouTube? It's Wednesday. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's Will. You find him at Sedex Glass on Instagram. Adam Sims is with us. They didn't really say much though, so. No, nothing yeah. important anyway. Yeah. It's gonna important. Steal their jokes and shit. Man, okay. sorry guys. This is tricky, and it's just how it goes. We're, all we're right. good now. But. We're good now. Yeah. Okay. So where was I? I hope y'all heard me. Um, last night we did the tube, the multi-bore tubing, 
tonight we are going to I'll show you how to work with that stuff and I did it with this uh, slide that I made I just posted it into the uh, old group and I'll, I'll pop it up so you guys can maybe get a little bit of a better look there we go so that's what we're talking about each one of these things is the bore and so that's just a little section of that tubing and then a nice little martini style onto the joint and that's what we'll be doing later so um yeah so we go ahead and get this party started now that let's the audio is working um fuck yeah no, just <laughs> all right and, let's uh, go what's up yeah no i was just, i was just gonna say adam sims is with us guys uh for those of y'all that didn't get to hear adam's intro yeah yeah uh, yeah introduce the man i'm sorry about that y'all the settings were yeah. off man I'm well, be, be sure to follow on. adam sims guys uh sims underscore adam on the instagrams uh two m's two on, m's on the sims two m's on the sims there you go <laughs> word all right so let's pot this party off man here we go let's do this thing let's do we so cleanliness is next to godliness it's one of will's favorite sayings yeah He's really into jesus I'm always no, showering. Oh. Um, <laughs> but whatever you're into is all good. Anyways, um, you got to clean your stuff, especially if you're going to be working in clear. And you, you'll get weird scuzz and whatever it'll be. You don't want that. So here's a quick trick. Go ahead. You got your, your paper towels. Get that ISO on it or whatever. Put it around your claw grabber. And now you're in there. So if you're doing vac stacks or whatever type of encasements and such, you know, you want to clean the inside of that tube. Maybe it's been sitting in a storeroom for, you know, or whatever. Maybe it got dirty before you even bought it. You know what I mean? Because it's like stores have like the open cases or whatever and dust gets in. So it's, you know, even if it's like a new one, if you didn't actually see it come out of a case, probably best to uh, clean them shits. So yeah, the whole idea with the multi-bore tubing, guys, is that it's a bunch of tubes inside of another tube, as you can see there, illustrated by me. And, um, <laughs> That's but, it. Yeah, and then uh, essentially what we're going to do, just to give you guys a little bit of like premise or whatever, um, I'm going to bridge up these tubes, okay? They're going to be closed off on the bottom and have a little post, and then I'm going to bundle them together. And then I'm going to weld those posts together so they're all pretty tight, held in space. Um, they're not going anywhere. And then I'm going to go ahead and open the other side. Um, and basically I'm going to ream out each blow tube such that it closes off the airspace between the tubes. So I'm going to widen them up a little bit. It's just like heating them up and reaming them out repeatedly until all those little spaces come together and, you know, nudge a little bit if you need to. But basically, once you've got that, then I'm going to put that onto a handle. And that's a really, that's a tricky seal that you'll see. It doesn't got to be pretty, but you really got to cook that in so that it seals to the edge of that bundle. But doesn't close off any of the holes and that's really the whole game here man it's, especially when you're working with it there's it, the whole process is is all the seals are a little different because you don't want to be getting in on those holes i'll explain more of that later but for now um okay so we're gonna close off the airspace between those tubes get it on its own basically a, a handle with a little section of tubing on it that's been opened up and then sealed to that bundle then that bundle is going to go into that piece of tubing and <clears throat> and that tubing is going to then be closed down onto the blow tube section that you that you had added to that bundle and what that allows is for a vacuum on the other side to suck it down like a vac stack or whatever and the only area that it has access to is the space between the tubes the tubes are open on that other side so that's kind of the idea and you'll get to see it go down here um some of the repetitive stuff i've cut down so if you're watching this from last night it's all good you're not gonna have to watch as much again um but yeah okay the important thing here is to not you want to like 
pull that out to a little taper because if the diameter gets any bigger than the tube itself, that's going to not bundle up properly. It'll push one of the tubes out, you know, or whatever. So that's really all that you got to do. There's no, nothing crazy, you know, but yeah, I pretty much just let that get hot and then seal the little, you know, thing to it and cook it in and then pull it out to a nice little taper. And so what far, so good. What sizes are you uh, using, Mike? You know, I did this back in March, and um, I, I, sure. <laughs> I, I believe that these were either 12 or 9.5. Probably okay. 12. They look like 12 to me. Yeah, it looks like 12.7 yeah. to me. And I think that they went into a 44 or a 50 mil tube. I think it was a 50. There you go. Oh, the numbers. Yeah. Uh, that's a detail I should have remembered because, you know, that that's that's the first thing I'm asking in demo. Like, what sizes are those? You know? <laughs> but this works with pretty much whatever you have. And um, something that I, I, I believe is really important if you're doing in, in casements and stuff is um, even sleeves. Uh, being able to adjust your blank size and I've shown some of that in previous episodes I don't remember which ones but once we've done encasements on there's been at least one where like I showed going through the blank and it, it's just kind of getting big sections hot and really gently marvering them you know repeatedly it's one of these times when you can marver your problems away it's not ideal but like you know, that's how you just really, if you do it really evenly and slowly, you're not going to push any weirdness in. It's not about pushing a problem away. It's about making something different, you know. So, all right, so the the meme stands. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you can do this with pretty much any size, especially if you get comfortable with adjusting your blank sizes down. And if you want to do, like, clean honeycombs or whatever it'll be and especially if you want to do something unique with it you know where you're not just grabbing some stock stuff and f seeing what it fits in if you want to start doing interesting and unique things you simply have to be able to adjust a blank to a certain size um i was showing something the other day i took a 75 mil heavy wall out to 98 to fit a particular encasement i haven't actually pulled that down yet but I'm going to record that shit, because if I pull that off, <laughs> call Guinness or something, I don't know. Call Guinness. <laughs> so is this your technique, or did, did you learn this off of someone? I learned this from Steve Bates, actually. It's a good thing to bring up. Um, Steve Bates is who taught me how to do this, and I mentioned this last night. Some of this stuff I'm forgetting now, because we, you know, we did this part of the demo last night, and it was lost, but... Um, Things like this that certain people are known for or whatever that are really fundamental parts of classes I virtually never share. I think that that's disrespectful of my teachers and fellow students. Multibore tubing, though, is something that you can buy and that, like, on the forums back in the day, man, like, there's all sorts of talk about it, and they were all using it to make, like, little perks and filter sections or whatever, you know, like screens, they call them. And so it's, like, it's nothing new, and everybody was talking about it openly at that point and you can buy the stuff so i think that that fits into like a little different category you know as opposed to like a technique that somebody came up with it's more of a you know it's just a type of tubing and then what you do with it from there is you know where you let your creativity shine um speaking of homies i don't want to see a bunch of gordo ripoffs don't do that <laughs> he does the riptide caps man they're really cool he's he's doing amazing stuff with the multi-bore shout outs to him um <clears throat> i almost feel bad you know because i feel like somebody is somewhere is gonna like just take this and try and knock him off but please homies don't do that let's be respectful in this community and uh use this to do something unique and find your own voice with this stuff at least like integrated into your own things you know all right so okay that's the bundle that i was talking about earlier see it's got little bridge posts or whatever didn't like that one <laughs> i don't know what it's, i was looking it's, for it's interesting to see how you you know how somebody else comes up with things there's so many ways to 
and a cat, a, a, a shop mate and I spent a month figuring out how to do this. And we definitely don't, you know, we're definitely not doing it the way you're doing it. But That's in interesting. The end result, you know, it, mm -hmm. it comes out, you know. Yeah. There is more than one way to skin a cat, yes. Yeah, I actually really like this methodology. It like, for a number of reasons, where everything is bridged up and posted up, um, even for tight tubes, um, it holds everything in place super tight. Um, and then the other thing is that it gives you this little bit of buffer zone between the end of the tube where you start getting into the, the blow tube or whatever. And it really allows you to get every last drop out of an encasement. So if you're making honeycombs or whatever, you know, if you're doing a one with a ton of tubes or a ton of rods, rather, I understand. Um, but, yeah, up to 19 even or even more, you know, whatever it'll be. Um, but I, I really do like having them posted up and bridge like this. It's sort of tricky because you can't access the interior of that seal. This is another, like... You know, I'm going to try and get into something we got into last night, so I feel a little weird. But um, this notion of, like, I, I, I can't explain it to you properly on the molecular level. We need, like, Mike Souza or something for that. But what I, what, I've, what I know to be true or have experienced to be true is that when, if you just gather that glass up and let it sit, you know, like, there could be all sorts of weird weirdness in there. You take that same gather and, and draw it out a bit, and that's kind of like setting these these stress patterns or molecular you know orientations. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know the right terminology here. But it's, it's like, like the grain of the glass. Yeah. It totally. Yes. It's it it's something like that. That's it's. I don't know what it is, but like that's that's a good way of illustrating it. Um, it's as things get pulled out, it, it, it draws it into that, that it makes it comfortable and happy. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of cooking that back. I left them a little bit long so that I could do this. I'm probably going to draw some glass off. And then in the end, when I handle, I might not draw glass off. I may have already done that. I don't know. But either way, I'm definitely going to like let that cook together. And then I'm going to give it that, that tug out to kind of help set that stress. And even if I couldn't get it, like the total interior of, of those seals, you know, because it's like, you know, you'd have to have like a micro hand torch or something to like weave between the, the bridges or whatever to get inside. It's not necessary though, you know, like this is from here is going to like go and, you know, it's going to get hot on the other end and I'm going to keep that happy if I need to. Um, it's just, it's this idea of sometimes the glass that matters most is the shit that never even makes it to the finished piece. And, like, that stuff that doesn't make it to the finished piece does not have to be photogenic. That shit can be ugly as hell as long as it's structurally sound. So, like, if you're bringing, like, for example, when we're sealing those end caps and stuff like that that you'll see later, those aren't pretty seals. I'm not aiming for them to be. I'm just condensing it back enough and blowing it out and repeating that enough until I see that there's, like, nothing that's going to catch. Nothing that's going to trigger a, a stress point during the pull when I'm working with this stuff later. So, um, let's just keep that in mind. And it's just, like I said, sometimes the, the really important part is the shit that, that is not in the final piece at all. All right, so that's in there. It's looking good. I'm stoked. I probably shouldn't be touching that so much, but whatever. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, that's right. Clean that shit. <laughs> and we are live tonight, guys. If you do have questions for Mike, uh, y'all can throw them down in the YouTube chat room. Hell yeah. Uh, and uh, again, if you guys are checking us out on YouTube in syndication later, you can still throw your questions down and we will get them uh, and uh, probably even respond. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, man, we're pretty responsive. Um, there's a post about this in the Torch Talk group. I also posted the Martini slide. Um, either of those posts, or just post a question in the group. <laughs> 
then you can get some input from other people who have done it. You know, like Adam was saying, he's spent some time figuring out how to do this with a different methodology. What is going on here? Where am I? Here I am. Why did I leave this footage in? Did I grab like the wrong video or something? Uh oh. I'll tell him what's about to get shown. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> this where you get naked? Oh, all right, here we go. Oh, okay. That'd make for an interesting episode, that's for sure. Yeah. Be the talk of the town. <laughs> Did was this on last night's one, Will? Uh, yes. It okay, was. all right, cool. Is this where I'm getting ready to pull a point on that big tube? I think so. All right, yeah, yeah, okay, this is cool. I just Grabbing the rollers, yeah. Setup. Yeah. I, I scanned through this stuff when I was doing, like, this edit, <clears throat> and I definitely didn't notice that I... Any, anywhere that I saw myself gone for, you know, like, a little bit, I was like, eh, that's out. Cut that shit. Which actually ha has some, some, some fun results that you guys will see a little bit later. Man, what the fuck am I do? Get to work. <laughs> and uh, real quick, while we're uh, while Mike is setting up his flame chemistry there, uh, Chuck O'Donnell has joined us. Oh fuck yes. So, uh, welcome, Chuck. Thank you. Twin Flames Glass. Everybody knows where they can find Chuck. Oh, yeah. He's out there. And, Mike, I think last night you had talked about how, um, you know, you, you like to warm these fl uh, these big pieces in with a, a nice bushy flame. Yeah, that's true, man. Um, yeah. You know, there's a lot of methodologies for this, and, and some people, like Dustin Revere, for example, man, he, like, just blast the tube and then lets the condensation go away and that's fine i've had some issues with that with bigger tubing though and i, I with bigger stuff especially i i pretty much always throw it into that big annealing you know as they call it the the, the large format dragon flame mm -hmm. <laughs> and um but yeah that's my preferred methodology for larger tubing for sure um other neat things is that you get this nice carbon line and you know if you're if you're kind of new to things and you're like pulling points and stuff like that this gives you like this nice zone so you know exactly how much you're trying to pull and it helps you stay in that zone because you know it's almost like you have like you know it's like r r driving on a road or whatever you got road lines or whatever um here I'm just letting this get really hot not letting it drift apart don't ever let things drift apart when you're pulling a point if anything condensed glass the soothing sounds of kiln doors everyone and this point timing man so I give it this gentle tug at first man and set the shoulders then I, I let it come out a bit and set that like nice diameter or whatever, and then I give the final pull. This isn't the best example because I don't have really good like handles on it, but I mean it's still like, I mean look, look at that. It's like a it's it's fucking perfect. <laughs> like I, I'm not saying I always do that, you know, and, but it's um the timing. It's not the best example of the timing, but it's still not the worst because like. You know, you see how I always go about these points, man. I'm always, like, really slow at first. Draw out that shoulder and let that shoulder set a little bit. And it sets and then a little bit more. And that sets the thickness and diameter of the handle. Not totally, but by letting it draw out and cool a little bit, it doesn't thin out when you pull it the rest of the way and you get that consistent diameter the whole way. So, you know, just slow, heat the right amount of glass, and then slow down in that pull. I, I really do think of it in those, like, three steps. You know, that initial setting the shoulder, then setting the diameter, then pulling the actual handles. Alright, so we did that.
using my nippers like almost like Jaws tools. And that was like that was actually a an encasement that I did earlier, like the scrap end from it. So it had a punny that was extending into the handle to keep things centered. I didn't do that with this because it was such a tight fit and everything was bridged and such. And then when I went to go for it, like that handle, like it didn't fit into the blow tube that I had on it. So I was like, eh, fuck it. I didn't need it. And I didn't. Everything was tight. So, But that's another thing you can do. And I know you guys have seen me do it in some episodes in the past. It's off of that, that bridge. Whatever. Have that punny go into the thing. You can do it when you're sleeving tubing as well, you know? Just put a punny on the end of the tubing that goes into the handle on the other side and that'll keep that centered the whole time when you're sleeving it down. See, I'm just flaring this out. And guys, that, that tool right there is like my favorite uh, price to performance ratio or whatever tool there it's uh i got it seriously for like four dollars on ebay it's stainless steel with a little bit of wax man it, it just reams holes out so perfectly and, and it's just the it's got a really perfect taper for opening holes and stuff i like it man it's uh if you're trying to save some money and you want a, a small reamer or whatever definitely recommend you peep that out Last night, somebody had, like, linked it in the thing. And, yeah, man, when you make a nice handle like this, you know, a big, fat section of heavy wall tubing is no problem. In fact, what I believe is that when you pull a point properly, it should support half the stock tube. So you got like a four foot section of 50 or whatever, man. And you, you pull that thing into two things, it should like that point should like really. I'm not saying you'd want to work that, but if you hold it up, it shouldn't bend. It should be good. It should be like, oh man, that works. I've done this on the show before. When you, when you pull a point properly, they're very structurally sound. You know, we talked about this a bit last night, actually. It's weird. It's like a deja vu episode, but like, um, <laughs> we were actually talking about that in the chat. Room. Really? Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one feeling it. A couple of times. Yep. Yeah. But you know, this, this, uh, points and blow tubes debate or whatever, um, you know, Mattis Cookie wanted to actually do it on the show and it didn't happen because the peeps he wanted to debate were like, no, I don't want to do that because. Some people don't want to debate the way they work, you know? That's cool. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm pretty agnostic on the whole thing because it's like I use points and I use blow tubes. You know, and when I get above a certain weight or scale, I'll definitely switch to a blow tube, but there's times when points are simply the faster way to get through a certain section of a project or whatever it'll be. You know, it's like do what makes sense. Um... Sally Prash was talking about this during her gas demo, which you guys can see in our gas coverage. Um, amazing talk. She was talking about how she made, um, she demonstrated all these different glass musical instruments that she'd made with quartz and with boro, and it was fascinating. Um, she talked about this structure with quartz that they'd made that that resonated a tone for like three months or something. Yeah. It was completely insane. They had it, like, suspended. In a vacuum. Yeah, in a vacuum. And the motherfucker mm -hmm. rang for three months. Like, for trust me, uh, if you go to our channel, just go to torchtalk.com and go to playlists. You'll find that in the GAS 2017, the Glass Art Society Conference. Um, anyways, it, during that, she mentions, you know, like, that, that she doesn't really have a preference to just, like, at a certain, um, I forget, I think it was, like, 44 or something she said, that's when she switches to, um, blow tubes. Mm -hmm. So below a certain diameter, it's, she's all points, and then above that, she switches, and I'm not saying anybody's right or wrong here, it's just, in my mind, and 
I, I, it's like there's no need to, to take a side here, y'all. Like, trust me, get good with both, and then you can make your decision based on what's best for the situation, and there, there won't right. be an issue, you know? If you know how to do your butt seals with the blow tubes, for example, you know, you're not going to have them cracking there. You know, some people don't like to use blow tubes for that sort of thing, you know? But it's like, man, if your seal is cracking, it's it, it wasn't structurally sound, you know? There was something kinked up in there or some weird something. Yep. Depends on the job as to what tool you need, you know? Yeah. It's just, I don't know, it's just weird to me that some people ride one or the other off or whatever and it just seems to me that maybe they never got comfortable with the other one but I never know yeah some people are just more militant than others I don't know this is what it is I'm just in my opinion if, especially if you're starting out definitely learn how to do both you know and if you do decide to take a side at least you chose be, you know with an understanding of why you did it you know can't be like, oh, points are weak. Points break breaking your hand or whatever. Like, no, they won't, man. You know, that's your fault, one way or the other. You know, sort of thing. So anyway, as I'm handling up to this big bad boy, got those sealed together. It's just a giant butt seal or whatever, you know. So I brought them together, gave them that kiss, condensed it back a little bit. Now I'm kind of letting it flow together, up and down. Gravity's moving it around. Then I'm going to give it a little tug out, and I'm going to give it a little puff. Most of that was off camera, unfortunately, but... That's how it goes. That's how all the magic happens. Yeah. Right off camera. <laughs> Just like last night. <laughs> Well, it was on camera, but we just don't know where it is. And there I'm checking to make sure that that tubing is really straight. I'm always, always waiting for things to settle down and making sure that they stay as straight as possible. And I'm pretty much just going to slice this fucker open. Oh, mercy. Pretty much just going to try and heat one band there and just draw that all out and then thin that shoulder out and then open it up. Just... That's got to come down over the thing, you know? So, like, I don't want a bunch of janky glass there. I want this to be a nice, virtually stock-looking tube when it opens up. It's pretty much what I always go for, but especially here, man, I, you know? It's like some of these tubes, I want to bring down a bunch of extra glass. Because that, you know, like a vac stack, for example, if you leave a little bit of extra tubing on the end, you can just fold that down over the rods, you know? And that helps you get it sealed up. You know, so you can start your pull or whatever, but in this case, it's already going to be a whole bunch of, like, stacked seals, man, that are weird. So I don't want to fuck around there too much. So here, man, I'm just kind of rolling that against the Marver while I push back against it with my jack against the top of the L Marver. And that's just redistributing that glass to the pattern of the wall where it's further back. So it's just making it, like, stock tubing. Same technique I do for Encalmos and stuff like that, where you want to just return that to a really even, almost stock lip. And that's pretty much there. So yeah, that's ideal. A 
looks like I wanted to make that wall look really nice too. <laughs> it's like there's a little, little wobbly, you know what I mean? But I'm not entirely certain that was necessary, but whatever. At the same token, it's just what I said, man. I really do want that area at the end to be pretty clean because that's gonna get folded right down over this other area. That's that's kind of a weird seal. So. So here we are. We're gonna check this for fit. There we go. We're in. We're in dogs. All right. So we know that that thing is straight now. To the to the kiln with the. <laughs> Here's another one I should have caught. Hey, there I am. All right. So here's where we're going to go ahead and close off the air spaces between the tubes. And like I was saying earlier, we're going to accomplish that by heating the end and repeatedly reaming those tubes out. Your mission here is to not let those close up don't do this too fast because you got to hit like seven of them you know it's like whack-a-mole or whatever you know and like they're all gathering together you know and like you see one starting to close up and you're like oh, i gotta hit that like just just take your time here do this in 10 steps if you have to it's no big deal Yeah, I think I was like trying to move around so you guys could see that a little better. In doing so, I've kind of made my life a little harder, as I recall, but it's no big deal. Nothing we couldn't get, get through. Definitely don't let those tubes close. This is going to be a very awkward time to get in there and play surgery. They're closed off on the other side, you know what I mean? So it's going to be a vacuum if you try and heat it back up. You're going to have to like pick out a peak and squash the glass over it and all that sort of stuff. No. It's possible, but you don't want to find yourself there. And here's the part where you use your imagination of me reaping those holes. <laughs> It's always a good time in the chat room. <laughs> yeah, you know, I feel a little bit bad that we lost the show last night, but I was like, man, I, you know, the, everybody who's with us live, man, all, all my homies out there, I know that, that y'all were able to get together and still have that weekly party, which to me in some ways is more important than whatever we're doing on the show. You know, in my opinion, that, that gathering has become more important. And... Um, you know, I was, man, I was pretty, pretty bummed at, at, you know, at the end of the night when I realized that, that I'd fucked up. And, uh, but at the same token, I was like, man, at least the homies got the, the live party, you know? And now, we're gonna do a way better version of this show with, you know, much more information about this tubing and getting to use it and all. It's all worked out. And I'm like, fuck yeah, man, they get to have a second party. This shit's tight. So now I'm rounding that out a little bit. Not too much. You don't want to mess those tubes up. But gently get it round because you got to seal up to this. And if it's like a, you know, like a honeycomb shape or whatever, man, and you're putting something round on it, that's not going to be a good match. You know what I mean? So round it out. Re-ream if you need. Do what you got to do. But just by repeating this process, you'll end up with a round, a roundish, round enough end, and all those holes open. 
And like I was saying earlier, it's the same game when you're actually working with this tubing, you know. Whenever you're doing seals on it and making moves with it and stuff, it's always keeping it in mind that, man, if it gets too twisted up or if if anything too much happens to it, it something's going to close off. And that's not what that's not what you want. So, um, what are we doing next? Oh, we're going to probably handle up to the, uh, we're going to make that handle. Okay, so we're probably going to make that, that handle that goes on to the end. That's like a honeycomb end or whatever. So I'm just going to, like, get that off. I'm going to, like, neck that down. And then I'm going to use that same glass. Just It's not perfect, and I kind of regret that. But it worked. <laughs> so, yeah, that was in the kiln because I knew what I wanted to do there. I was like, I don't want that. That's, like, scrap in there. But I knew I wanted that, that like, clear cap. So yeah, that's the Infinity. It's just a really dope type of V blade with like steel wheels. We on them wheels of steel, y'all. still want that honeycomb cane so I'm like being careful here <laughs> now it's down enough that I can like diamond shear into it or whatever Trusty old diamond shears. It's gonna let me finish the job here of like condensing that section, adding stress there, and getting it separated. Could have maybe cut this part out, but I don't know. It's just maybe fun to see how you like reuse you know like it's kind of maybe neat to see that i don't know <laughs> that's how you do it yeah so now i got this nice handle man it's already got like enough enough glass on the end to make that piece that i need so I'm just kind of reaming that open with my jacks. Same trick, man. There's no, like, tubing to ream it against, you know? So I'm kind of just, like, playing it by ear. But all I'm trying to do is kind of bring that down and get it just a little nicer. So I can actually use it here. Eggs are dope. This is a Mickelson egg, you guys. And when you really get a feel for it, you can pretty much just sit in the flame and let something ride on it and bring it out to whatever diameter you want. Like, Nathan Smith, actually, as a gift, he gave me this giant, ridiculous egg. And it sat around for, like, a year or two. 
and I never used it because I was just like, what the fuck am I going to use this for? But like, remember I was mentioning that 75 millimeter tube that I brought out to 98? That's how I did it. I pretty much just egged that yeah. thing out um, until it, you know, just piece by piece just drew that thing right on out. And it, it looks like a pretty stock piece of giant tubing. Them are really nice. Eggs. Yeah, yeah, they're great. All right, so here we go. Now I'm going to take this cap and get it sealed onto those tubes. And let's talk about these seals that we're doing onto these multi-bore sections. Maybe there's a better way, but my methodology has been to go a little bigger than the seal because... Um, if you go straight onto it, you're going to end up very close to the holes. And you're going to end up putting, like, mashing glass onto the holes. That that got way too loose there, but I don't think it was that big a deal. Yeah, I was like, whoa. So that was a quick quick flaring. Quick flare on the Hail Marver there. So yeah, I pretty much just like catch that lip above and then roll around and let it let it catch the rest. And that was big and kind of weird. You'll get to see this happen, you know, in a, in a lot more precise on the smaller seals later where it's like way more important, you know. You'll see that. But um that's the idea here is like I really don't give a shit how ugly that looks right now. All that matters is that I got that over it without fucking up those holes because now that it's sealed off I have air access and look at this see it's like I can move all that glass around and I will condense that back in and every move here I've got access to the air now and I'm able to like blow the tubing away from each hole like once you have air access and you blow into it they start to like it just it's like they blow the glass away from one another so it's it's you, you don't want to have to do too much, but you, you do kind of... I, I feel like it's better to to condense it back and, like, let that glass flow into the multi-bore tubing's wall rather than try and glob right over that edge and end up catching one of those holes because, like I said, you mess those holes up. It's just not good. And, yeah, so this does not, like look pretty but that end is totally sacrificial all that matters is that there's not any hard angles in there so I'm condensing it back as many times as need be to make sure that that happens and make sure that that nothing is getting in the way of you know those uh the bores or whatever and you'll see it you'll be able to see through it and you'll see them like everything just you'll see that 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 it's like it's almost like they're spraying glass into the handle or whatever but you'll see what I'm talking about on each bore so that's pretty much what I was trying to accomplish there and so like I said that's not the prettiest handle over there but that doesn't matter I mean it's all like getting divided out and shit because it's like old glass I've used it maybe even on previous projects before that honeycomb that it came from none of that matters all that matters is that it's not going to crack during this process so All right, so I'm moving, removing a lot of that bridge structure because I don't need that much of it. But I'm making sure that all those posts still stay together. So I'm like tying them in together and making sure that they're all connected as I go out. If you feel like wasting massive tubing, that's on you, you know what I mean? But, like, I'm not. I, I just want to get that in there as much as it needs to. If you have massive bridges, you know, you're just wasting, like, in whatever that amount of tubing is, so. Yeah. It's always a good time in the chat room. <laughs> no, man, one of these days, I'm going to play hooky. 
like sorry Will I'm not feeling well and then you'll see Miguel Glasquez in the chat <laughs> that's my fake name used to be a secret hidden name yeah <laughs> But no longer. Not much good anymore, but it's okay. Never, never going to do it, so. All right, so uh, I was adding my post there because I thought it was going to go into the handle, the blow tube or whatever. <coughs> I don't think it fit, so I ended up, set, you know, it was gone later, but that was the idea. I was like, I'll leave just enough of that post, you know, and it'll go into the blow tube. And it's like, why not, but, oh shit, did y'all see that? I was out like fucking Swayze. I must go now. My planet needs me. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so here's where I was talking about how we're going to do another seal down over that cap. So once we've got this down over that cap, the only thing that the other side has air access to is the space between the tubes. And once you've accomplished that, it's pretty much like a vac stack or any other type of in vacuum encasement. So yeah, I rolled that down over that handle, and now I'm just going to pretty much cook all that glass together, man. Really cook it in, blow it out, cook it in, blow it out. Don't got to be pretty, but it, I do have to get rid of any any type of harsh angle. It can be wonky as fuck over there, like I said, it does not need to be photogenic. But you absolutely must eliminate like hard and weird angles and stuff because it'll it'll pop on you later or whatever if you don't. And yeah, and if and if you get all slack over here, man, you're gonna hurt yourself later because like if it pops or if you know you're worried about it because now I've told you, <laughs> damn it, Mike Mason said it's gonna crack. Uh, better, you know. And then you're constantly gonna be having to shuffle back to that to keep it hot. And you don't want to do that, so. Just take some time there and really cook that shit in and, and make sure that you inspect it or whatever. Really look in there and be like, all right, well, that looks weird, but it, it's not like a harsh angle or anything like that. And, you know, I kind of got into this discussion, like stuff that Roger Paramore taught me about um, thermal stress versus mechanical stress. And mechanical stress is what I'm talking about, those harsh angles and things that the glass can't f fucking be happy with you know it's um and then there's thermal stress which is like when you have one part of the glass hotter than the like so much hotter than the other part that it's forcing the zone in between into the stress zone and the stress zone is like around 980 degrees for borosilicate so like annealing is like 1050 but that zone where the molecules start to tense up again and take their like you know final positions or whatever that's right around then and if anything is fucked up then that's when it's going to trigger that stress so you know and they play off one another if you have some weird kinked up angle in there or whatever and it seems like it's fine while you're working on it the reason that you find it in the kiln fucked up later is because when it went through the, the that transitional zone or the stress zone it triggered that mechanical stress. So the thermal stress can trigger the mechanical stress. Or the thermal stress can just be enough on its own to make the glass pop. So it's like, for example, at the end of a big piece when you've got a bunch of attachments on there, the, the rule of thumb is like uh, two minutes out, ten minutes in. And the idea there is that the whole piece gets hot, and then as you're working on it those two minutes, it's, it's like cooling together. Thicker parts might cool faster, but they're not, like, way off, you know? They're coming down together, and that's a much happier arrangement than things getting, you know, like I said, super hot and super cold and forcing certain parts of it through the stress zone because that, you know, that's where it's going to make any any structural weakness is going to get triggered. 
So that's what we're trying to avoid here by cooking that in and blowing it back out. Like I said, it doesn't have to look pretty, but it does need to, to have basically the mechanical stress mitigated because we know that during this process it's going to be exposed to thermal stress. It's going to stay pretty freaking hot, but like while we're all the way on the other side, you know, it's going to be getting a lot colder and things are going to be happening. So that's just a little bit of talk about these stresses. I, I can't recommend learning with Roger Paramore enough, man. He's a fascinating guy. I think we just kicked the vac on and we'll talk about encasing here now. You can see it starting to come down and, and see that line where it's like basically that end was really hot from where I was cooking that handle back and blowing it out and everything. And then I soaked a bunch more heat in there before I kicked the vac on. So like that's where that line is. And, you know, the, my my theory of operation here or whatever is that, it's like I call it it's my Juicy J theory of, of vacuum encasement. And it's bands that make a dance. So you're always trying to stay in that band where you see the, that line. That's your band. And you need to stay in that band of heat and barely proceed forward at such a pace that as you're moving forward, it's like a car wash, you know what I mean? Like the, the automated ones, you know? It's like the car has to go through it so slowly that those brushes have enough contact time with the car. It's, that was like a pretty weak analogy off the top of my head, but... There's some truth here. You've really got to stay in that band long enough to soak heat all the way to the core of whatever it is you're encasing. This this is going very quickly because there's so much hollow space in there. Like a solid one, man, or even a, like a vac stack or whatever, you've really got to take some time and you're almost waiting to feel it get a bit loose. Because that, when when you can feel the whole thing, you know, getting a little bendy on you, or like you have to, keep, you know, work a little more to control it, that's when you know heat has soaked enough into the core that the the walls are sucking together. And staying in that band is essential because if you go too far ahead, the walls will come together and trap air, you know, behind where you're at. So it's it it's. It all goes pretty quick. We're almost all the way to the end already here, as you guys can see. And um, it's just a matter of keeping it controlled enough and moving through. Um, if you have your vacuum on a foot pedal, you can stop if you need to. If it's getting a little too loose on you, you're like, oh, shit, fuck, I let it get too hot. Man, just slowly back, back out of the flame, chill out, hit the vac off, you know, but... That's all predicated on you not having, like, put heat ahead of where you need to be. Because when you kick that vac off, you know, that's where that shit stops. And then before you kick it back on, you've got to get back into that band and, like, not get ahead of it. So that, like, when you kick the vac back on, it's, like, kind of where it was already. So then I even give, I'm giving it a second here and I may have kicked the vac off there. So it was just coming down a little bit. I was like, oh, shit, we're drawing out too much. I think it's pretty much done, though. It may have been done. Mike, there was a question that came through. When you were uh, down at the vac end, right there where you're at with the flame, uh, somebody was wondering if that end of the tubes was closed off. Yeah, they were. They've been closed off since I added the bridging posts. Gotcha. Yeah, they never got opened up again or anything. They always... Otherwise, the vacuum would suck the air out of them, too, making exactly, them Exactly, yeah. Nothing. They always stay yeah. closed off, and that that's why when you open them up and close off those spaces and then get it sealed in... Um, with that cap piece right that at that point you know that's how they can get out and then you close it down over it and then yeah that air space in between is just um just the space between the tubes and that's where we're at now with it so yeah like we're pretty much done here we're, i'm gonna go ahead and like start pulling this down another question came through mike yeah uh imran peeler wants to know what size vac are you using at this time, I was using a really small shop vac, and um, I've shown this in previous episodes. You can go back to anyone you know that's that has a vacuum encasement. I do what's called like we call it the East Coast method, where basically you take the hose on the vac stat on the vacuum, the shop vac, and you cut open like a twenty ounce bottle, uh, like a hole big enough for that hose to go in, and then on the cap you drill a hole 
big enough for your your blow hose to sneak through and be held in there so it's like just slightly smaller than the blow hose diameter you know so when you snake it through it stays in and then you put some holes into the bottle to reduce the suction and to the to the amount that you want and you can tape it back over if you need more but you know it just it takes a surprisingly small amount of suction to close down an airspace like this you know there's very little like you know volume of space in there and it's just the tiniest, you know, little bit of suction is enough to pull those walls together. And too much suction can pull them together when they're not ready. And that's, you want to avoid that too. You, know, you want everything to be really hot when they start to come together. So, yeah. That's a bit I of the, the theory. Those, What's that? I picked up one of those bags from Jason Gordon. Those yeah, see, it, that yeah, that's, those things are great. That's what I use now. So any of my more current um, vacuum encasement demos have been with the, and you'll actually see it hanging out in the background. And my, and like when I, cause like this was filmed in March, and then I did the actual martini slide today, cause I was like, man, fuck this. I was like that that we lost that episode, but we can rebuild it. We will make it better. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> so I, I hit the you know the the, the studio today and, and put some work in and you'll actually see it hiding out under my bench. But yeah, I have the Vax Stacker pedal by Jason Gordon. I have the 007 model. It's all built into a little tiny Pelican case for travel. It's basically nice. a it's a foot pedal operated vacuum for those of you guys who don't know what we're talking about. It's um it's great man it's super tiny it's super quiet it just perfect suction it can also be used to inflate instead of suck and it's like it's got an, an extra valve on there that you can use to really dial in the suction so it's like everything you'd ever want for glass vacuuming you know from an awesome glass artist man so i think he stopped making them though i, I yeah he, it's not on his Z- it's not on his etsy anymore and I, you know, I almost feel bad talking about it because it was so fucking dank. But, you know, maybe <laughs> you if you ask, one, maybe if you ask him nicely, I don't, I'm not certain that he's not selling it. I haven't asked him or anything. I just noticed that it disappeared from the Etsy and maybe he's like, I'm done with that shit. I told him to charge more, baby. I was like, dude, you gotta, you gotta charge more because like, it won't be fun for you to make these if a hundred orders come in and you should be making something for that, you know, but he was like, no, no. You know, you know Jason, dude. He's he's a good dude. Uh, I know. Have, have you been to a live free? Have yeah, man. Been I been made it to live before? free actually like a few years ago. Nice. I've been up there a couple times. It's really uh, the the Gordon family. What a what a nice family. Yeah, they're an awesome family, man. That was a great time, man. Everybody up there was great, man. Got to kick it with Derek Weaver my first time, man. There. Nice. Yeah, we had a, we had we had a hell of a time. Let me tell you, man. Holy shit, dude. Derek's a blast. Um. Yeah, it was a really inspirational experience, man. I was fucking tripping well, face we on mushrooms. Well, we were together at the same time. No, we I think you went the years. next year, man, shooting for the documentary or whatever. I wasn't. Okay, I wasn't. The year before that, too. Uh, yeah. See, yeah, the was year that, that you missed the then would have been the year I was there, unfortunately. But yeah, that that, that was a surreal time, man. I was. Uh, well, let's just say I was getting loose <laughs> on some mushrooms. <laughs> Fuck it, I don't care. It's my show. <laughs> Fuck it. I was tripping balls, watching Jason Lee, you know, like sleeve, little tubing and all sorts of shit. And I was just like, man, my life is fucking awesome. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is awesome up there. It is. It was beautiful. It was a really magical time. And um, man, I had a blast. Yeah. And like I said, Jason Gordon's a great dude. He's one of my teachers and, you know, friends. He's he's great. Um. I was saying last night, I was like, man, I didn't need to pull down this whole tube like this. When you're pulling stuff down, the further apart your hands are, the more difficult it is. But at the same token, like, the more I can get everything down and happy, it just gets back to that thing we were talking about in the beginning, that like setting that grain or whatever. I just want to set that grain as quickly as possible, you know, throughout this whole piece. And, whoa. Getting too loose. I think I lost a handle there or something. It was getting crazy. I don't know what happened exactly, but 
It's all good. When that happened, I was just like, I'll just keep everything straight, you know, because it was really hot on that other end. No big deal. So get that janky shit off. That's what's important. And then you can get the rest in and deal with it or whatever. Oh, shit. I was having way too much fun when I figured out I could do that. I was like, oh, the camera never changes, so I can just make myself disappear. <laughs> it's fucking great. And then here, guys, this is where I um, pulled down that twisted up section that y'all saw in the preview. So, like, if you want to do what I'm going to make next and not twist it up while you're doing it or whatever, which wouldn't be ideal, this is the way to have that long section that you, and then you take little pieces of it and work with it. And that's what we'll talk about next. Um, after this, we're going to um, we'll do the martini slide. And really, that's just just a way to illustrate, you know, all these some fundamental concepts of working with this tubing. You know, what you do if you get a section of it, for example, how to punny up and how to blow tube up to it and then how to actually get it sealed into pieces or whatever. So I'm just getting a handle on this thing. This is like that. That's that front end. It's pretty... You know, like, it's not bad, it's happy because it was so super hot. But that other end where, where it connects to that, um, to the handle, you know, like, that's definitely, like, sacrificial into the beginning, you know. So, I want to get, get that down and, you know, it's just like I was saying with the whole tube, you know, get it down and get it happy. don't want to lose a section because you took too long and left it connected to a handle that you know that you knew from the beginning was sacrificial because it wasn't going to survive so you got to play your part there and, and get the good shit away from the bad shit and then this guy's this is like doing um i don't know what they call it. they call it like a slip stream pull or whatever like I don't, i've heard a number of names for it but they all sound a little silly to me but either way um Basically, I'm going to get this heated up and kind of twist it as I'm pulling it down into a section. So as long as you've kind of put really even heat into a section and kind of get it drawn out evenly, you know, it's almost like a slow motion, like stringer or any other pull, you know, where you've kind of, or like pulling a point, you know, where you get it and you get that diameter set and then the rest of it draws out to that diameter. That's kind of the idea, so... It, it, it's like it's all predicated on really even heat keeping everything controlled and keeping everything moving consistently i brought up a quote last night that i fucking love robert mickelson told me this he told me this all casually we're just like in his class and he was like i was like working on these little leaf edge serrations or whatever and he just walked up and he was talking to me about it and giving me some pointers and then he said to me just like real chill like he's like glass is balance rhythm and timing that's all super profound and shit and i was just like damn robert but um moves like this man you really do need to be like in a rhythm like i'm even bouncing man to like some music or something you can see i'm like in a rhythm i'm i'm keeping this balance you know i'm like keeping everything in the gravity the way it needs to move and the heat's moving the way it needs to move i'm you know i'm I'm letting gravity kind of help draw it out there, you know, as you see the angle I was at. I would never be at the opposite angle of that, for example, you know? Like, I'm not saying that's specifically why I was at that angle, but I definitely wasn't, at, you know, like, at the up angle. So, all right, so there it is, man. See, and I gave it a little bit of air. And in this case, man, I didn't give it air while I was puffing it out because I did not, like, um, I don't think I had a blow tube on it at that point or anything. If you want thicker bores, see, these are, like, those thin bores that you saw in the preview. If you want thicker bores, you definitely need to give it some air when it's hot and you're drawing it out. So that that's a little bit 
a little bit more uh, difficult to fuck with, but you look at these slackers, dude. Will's gone. Chuck's there. Okay, he was hiding out in the side. All right, but Will is off doing street drugs. All right, all right. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and get this martini party started, y'all. If that's that's about that life. Yeah. All right, let's do this shit. All right, check it out. Hey, nice shirt. Thanks, man. <laughs> I like bought that shirt mad randomly. I was filming. Um, it was that Justin Carter and Rye demo at Papa Joe's. I was filming that, and like maybe some of y'all noticed, but like the weather was really nasty, and like at a certain point in the day, it took like a freak turn. Like it got very windy and cold. And, man, I was like, fuck it. I just left the camera rolling and shot down the road to TJ Maxx and bought the pimpest shirt I could find. <laughs> this was this was it. So, <laughs> But I stand by it, man. I like that shirt. Okay, so um, I am opening up a tube that is going to connect to a stock section of that stuff. So... Um, like I was saying, all these seals, you're going to want to go just the tiniest bit bigger so that you can catch the rim and then let the glass flow back in. That's my opinion. You know, uh, others may have a different methodology, but it, that's, that's the best I've got because I, man, it's just so important that you keep those holes open. You know, block, you block one of those holes off and you just shut the whole thing. So, um, I'm going, I'm, I'm just testing my sizes here. I think I'd already, like, checked this against some random blow tubes that I had, just kind of ready to go, so I, I knew I was like, okay, it's got to be, like, in between these two or something, so that was the idea. Um, when I'm doing these blow tubes, man, like, I wanted um, almost like that martini <laughs> style uh, taper or whatever, so I'll first get it open a bit, and then I'll go a little bit further back and widen it up a bit more. I don't always take this level of care, but this this is some weird... This is interesting tubing. I want it to be just right, and I don't want a bunch of extra glass there, you know? Sometimes I'll just cook that back, really widen it up, you know? I don't mind if that thickens up a lot. I see, that's where I was comparing it to some other ones. Yeah, that's the idea. I'll be right back now that Will's back. <laughs> I had to make myself a cup of coffee. Yeah, I was busting you out. I was like, look at this. Will's gone. <laughs> <laughs> he disappeared, I right? Might have, I might have ate a bite or two of pizza, too. <laughs> that might have happened. Hell yeah, I'll be right back. I can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny. <clears throat> There's the flare. And also the flare of the tube. <laughs> So we hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this evening's uh, Torch Talk episode. Of course, Tuesday is our normal night, but you guys know that um, the Twitch thing went down. So we lost the episode, and uh, here we are tonight. And uh, we appreciate all you guys and gals watching very much. You guys know what to do. Y'all can subscribe. Uh, if y'all enjoy this stuff, just hit that little button down there. Hit the bell. And if you hit the bell next to the subscribe button, every time we go live, you're going to get a notification on your smart device, email, whatever, uh, and you can set it up however you want to get the notification. So you'll never miss another live episode again. Uh, and that's an easy way to keep up with what we're doing. Of course, you know, we're live every Tuesday night, normally, and um, that's what it is. All right, so this right here is just like a hollow handle that I want to match the other one, but I'm condensing back a solid section. And I'm just letting it fall back and kind of making a puck to match the diameter of that tubing. Okay, and here's here's the deal. Is that like one end, you kind of got to go like this because you got to have it closed off. So if it's not already on a handle, um, which was the case here, like, I don't even know where the bigger section of that, that tubing went. It's hiding out in my house somewhere. But I did find, like, the smaller section. And, you know, that's fine. 
but it, you know it was open so you got to close off one of those ends so put a solid punty on it and then you can get a nice blow tube onto the other side and and then if you're smart you'll go back to the other end and cook that seal out like just shoot a bit into the tubing where they connect you know and kind of blow it out so that the bores inside get a little blown out and seal better to where you've put that solid handle just my opinion but they'll tend to close down in weird orientations you know when you're doing that handle so here we go here's where we're gonna put that that solid handle on first See, I'm just rotating that, that piece around because, you know, I can't rotate it fully properly or anything, but I can do good enough. All right, so I brought them together. I'm letting them chill, I'm letting them flow together, and then I'm going to tug them out a bit. See, now I'm giving it that tug. And that's good enough for now. But like I said, for real, come back to that and put some heat into there after you get the other handle on. I didn't do that, actually, and I lost, like, like, like a centimeter in, you know? Like, it cry was no big deal, but it actually fell off when I was separating a section of that tube later, so it wasn't a big deal, but it just, I was like, man, if I'd just taken an extra second after I got that blow tube on there and had air ac access to blow it out just a little bit on the end, everything would have been totally happy. Instead, I left a bunch of kinks in there where... I said where the bores were closing down onto that solid handle all right so here's that one that I opened up and basically what I'm gonna do is get like a handle on there as best as I can make sure it's happy again it doesn't got to be pretty it's, it's got to be happy though it's got to be happy where it seals to the edge of that thing and all the bores should look happy so, again, I want to, like, go around the rim, you know? Could be, like, above the rim or whatever. What is this, Snipes? Um, and, again, the way I go about that is, like, I come in with that thing and just kind of tag the outer edge. And then almost, like, roll the... Uh, there, see that? Look at that shit. That's, see what I did? See, all right, look, I think I even showed y'all. You see where it's at? It's a little bigger, and look at that. See, the bores aren't into that seal. That's what I'm talking about right there, folks. And if you can do that, and then, like I said, condense it back in and let that glass flow into the wall of the multi-bore tubing. So I think I was blown into it a little bit there. And I'll probably condense it back another time. Blow it out a little bit, pull it out. Whatever I feel I need to do to, to make that happy. and See, That looks pretty good right now. And I think I'm just going to pull down a section of this here. And this is not so much part of like, this is what we're going to use for the martini slide, the, the multi-bore section in it. But this is more just to, to have the opportunity to show you guys how to work with this tubing, like how I got that seal onto there. That end, as you guys maybe saw earlier, wasn't perfect. It was, like, kind of angled and chiseled in and stuff. And, like, you can kind of see how that, you know, like, that handle that's on there because you can see through it. You can see it, like, it's smooth, man. It, it's not 
you know, photogenic, but you can see that, like, it's it just smoothly flows into the, the bores or whatever. And the wall of the handle just flows into the, uh, to that rim. So, yeah, I'm just kind of going in on that fat section there on the end. And I, I just, I, I, that, the diameter that's going into the blow tube is too much, so I know I want to, like, bring that down, and then I also want to take some of that middle section with it. I see I'm coming out the back, y'all. I'm, like, creeping down and taking my time and coming out the back now that it's hot. If I just came straight out, there would have been a hot spot. So that's why I creeped out the back. You can also come up slowly, you know? <laughs> that's another option, but creeping out the back is where it's at. Giddy. Yeah, all right. So, guys, same thing, man. I drew that out, but not too fast. And then I'm... Once that w diameter was set, it's almost like pulling a little point, you know. Now I'm giving it the giving it the juice. All right, so we drew that out. Um, what happened here? All right, we're gonna go ahead and make the um, the slide or start making the slide. You know, from there, you guys, I took a Jaws tool to that thing. And like ideally, you saw this stuff because it it, it kind of it it jaw you know if you it it just goes weird a little bit. It's it's tough to get like a perfectly flush snap on it. So I took a jaws tool to it, like in that long section, you know, where I could have a like a an even section to put the tool. But it it, it came off just a little bit off, which is no big deal. If that hadn't happened, I could have proceeded immediately, though. And then, if it had happened again on the other side, we could have proceeded from there. I think, actually, here it nipped okay. It was like when I went to nip it off the, um, off the other side after it was sealed to this, uh, slide. Basically, I, I forget which one it was, honestly. But... My my whole point here is that, like, the Jaws tool is actually a pretty fucking slick way to separate this tubing, but it doesn't always go well. So, like I said, I think I got it, like, 50-50 or whatever on this one, but... Okay, so I, I what you guys saw me do there, I condensed that section of tubing back so that when I blew out that ed, the top a bit, it would have an even wall with the rest. I'm always trying, with my hollow glass, I'm always looking for an even wall. So that's a really even wall now, even though the top part is blown way out. The way I facilitated that was by condensing it back first. And I'm going to keep doing a little bit of, you know, the jazzery here, but mainly, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get my shape by blowing it out. So that's what I did. You know, I condensed it back and had a lot more heat in the top. So it blew out almost to the shape it's in now, and then I came in on the marver and reinforced that shape. It wasn't any aggressive marvering there. It's just kind of to like hold it in position, and as I'm giving it that last little puff, it's being held at that angle by the the L marver and my paddle. So, and I was happy with that. And then I'm gonna switch handles. Do a quick handle switch. So I'm gonna open that up, and I think I'm opening that up. That what like what I was doing there, I was opening that up really slowly. I was just chilling in the flame and slowly, slowly puffing, but just letting the tip of it get there so that it was kind of slowly bringing that bubble out. And then when it so that when it came out, it was give me a nice, nice proper opening without fucking up where that edge scooped in. That was the idea, so I stayed off that edge and let the bubble make its way out through the rest of the glass on the end, essentially. And now I'm widening it up so that I can add like a 9.5 like a blow tube to it or whatever. There you go. That's what you want to do. If you're good at, like, shaping in the flame... You probably don't need me to tell you this anyways, but if you pull a point on that other end and just do it all in the flame, you can, like, already have a handle on that other side. That That's a huge time saver here. 
I, I don't, you know, this is, I just kind of rushed to the studio because I felt bad about, you know, losing that episode. And I know a lot of people were like stoked to see it and then it was not there. And it was like, fuck that. We're going to make it even better. But um, so I kind of rushed into the studio to do this and I haven't made a ton of these. But. <clears throat> Maddie Greenthumb is like, hey man, can you put some of this in the Hunger Fun packs? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. If you're lucky, Maddie. No. <laughs> I've been tempted to put some into like the subscriber packs. Like they they get prep every month, some kind of prep. But this is just it's weird stuff to work with. I don't know, man. I don't know. Whoa, this is crazy. And then it would sit in their drawer for three years. I don't know. I'd enjoy a slab of that. <laughs> for sure. A little slab of that. I'll keep that in mind. Now, also, uh, another question, um, but it kind of pertains to some other stuff, so we'll save it for the end. Uh, all right. For kind of wrap up for everybody to kind of throw in their input as well, so. Cool. All right, so here, guys, just like all my seals, man, I'm getting both of those hot. Bring them together. Let them come together. Put that heat in there, and then I draw them apart and give them a little puff. And I'm really trying, I'm just, and I'm, as I'm doing that, I'm really, when you see me doing this st sort of move, that's when I'm checking my handles. It's kind of got like a certain muscle memory, you know, of like when it's straight. All right, so handle switch. Like I, I said, love you, to feel the straight glass in your hand. What's that? I said I love feeling straight glass in your hand. You know? Yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, like, Start spinning like crazy. Yeah, you can get it right on center, and you just know it's locked in. It just feels perfect. Yeah. I don't it's use special feeling. I don't use that straight roller as much anymore. Like we saw it in J in uh, the one with uh, Justin Cartier, Justin Cartel. Now it's a Justin, Justin Carter, Carter, the homie. Yeah, I was joking in this other episode about how this guy keeps mistaking his name. He keeps calling him Justin Cartier. Justin Cartel. Anyways, man, you saw him use those uh, the straight rollers pretty extensively. I, I still use them, but it's like I feel like I trained my sense of that feeling like really extremely by using those for a period of time. So it's like... When it's off, man, it really feels off to me because I, like, for a long time I was pretty much working lays straight, everything, all the time. So now when it's not, I, man, uh, I'm not I'm not certain if I'm more sensitive to this than other people who've been doing it, you know, the same amount of time or hours or whatever. But I do think that's a great way to train yourself is to use the, the straight rollers and really check, you know, and see if you know if something feels straight to you. You know, check it against the straight rollers and see see how off you were. Sometimes you might be surprised, you know, how much kink there actually is. And you can't see it until you have it on the straight roller. Or in a lathe. I learned, um, I learned how to work on a lathe uh, from Ben Belgrad and Mike Nan. They're like my lathe teachers or whatever, I guess. And, um... At one point, me and Ben, uh, we made like a, a one of his drinking vessel style ones together, a cup. And like I, I was handing him off prep to make the foot and stuff like that. And, you know, it it's just like I didn't really have to worry about the shit, you know. Like I know that when I hand a piece of prep to someone that it's fucking ready. It's like it's lays straight. It's even. You know, I don't want them to be like, oh, I got to fix a bunch of shit. And... Especially if you're handing something to somebody with a lathe, you know, they'll see it right away. <laughs> but, you know, even if you're just collaborating with friends or whatever, man, you want to hand them stuff that's straight and even. And especially if they're going to do some unique technique with it. You know, if, if, you're, if you hand them something that isn't even, it's just a bunch of trouble. And, you know, um, 
sometimes people will ask to collaborate. And, you know, I got nothing against collaborating, you know, especially if we're just bullshitting around, you know, or whatever. But truth be told, when, like, somebody who is really new is like, oh, can I give you some of this? And can you make a Sherlock with it or this or that, you know? And I and I'm thinking to myself, like, how much trouble am I going to have shaping this into the products that I typically make? Because, you know, cleanliness is is somewhat important to me. Um, I, I don't necessarily need everything to look like a machine or whatever, but, like, everything should look like, you know, that there's a purpose behind it. And if I don't feel like I can do that, or if I feel like it's going to be a nightmare, or if I feel like I have to compromise that because of what somebody else handed me, that shouldn't have happened to me, man. You know what I mean? Like, every single time I've felt that way, it's been like, nah, dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, and, you know, and it's like, I'm not coy about it or nothing. I'm like, hey, listen, if you really want to collaborate, what I need you to hand me is, you know, just even prep. You know, hit me up again when you're really certain that that's the case. Because, you know, you can just look at somebody's work and look at what they're doing, you know? Um... And you can tell, like, this isn't going to be a piece of prep I can work with. You know, it would have to be, like, their best day. And that sounds like, I don't know, man. It's just, I only have so much time. I'm a single parent. I've had full custody of my daughter since she was, like, less than one. You know, um, time is limited, man. And, like, if I go on the tours, you know, I was talking about this last night, actually. Then There's, like, an activation energy for me, you know, like... Don't get me wrong, man. If I'm going to go grind out something, you know, like, that, that's that's another thing. But, all right, so I'm checking the scale there, you guys. Same thing. Look, I want it to be just a little bigger. It's almost like the opposite of those ring seals where you want it to, like, sit just in the rim. You want the, uh, the multi-bore to sit just in the rim. And that way it's not on the rim of the multi-bore, which is right by the holes. So, um, anyways, what was I doing? I was shitting on noobs? Yeah, let's do that more. Um, no, but it's just, um, you know, it's just like, man, um, really don't, don't ask to collaborate with people until you know that you're going to hand them something really proper, you know, it just, it's going to be better for everybody, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be happier, you're going to be happier because they made something sick with your work or whatever, or your visions came together, I don't know. Collabs are a weird topic, you know, in and of itself, man. It's like, I don't really, that's, it's not something I do with my glass friends, man. Like, I'd rather hang out with my glass friends and do non-glass shit somehow. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. It's just, there's more to life, you know, than the glass. And it's like, maybe I'm just tapped out because I run this torch talk thing or whatever. <laughs> when I'm with my friends, it's like, man, let's just be humans together. And let's forget about all that shit for right now. There he is. Yeah, sorry guys. The hangout was dead. I was like, damn man, everybody's just like let me ramble here. And I was like, wait a minute, the hangout. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what happened, man. It was like it was just it, you just draw or you know, you froze up or whatever. We were all still here just hanging. It it booted Chuck and then he it like auto joined him. It was weird. The weirdest thing. Yeah, I don't know. Are we, are we but, still live here? No, no, we're fine, man. The show is actually fine. I've just been okay, rambling. Cool. Yeah, no, we're totally cool. All right. Um, <laughs> All right. And then, yeah, guys, so, like, while I was rambling, you actually saw me do the seal there. And it was the same thing that I did when I was sealing up to the tube. I went, like, over that rim. I was, like, trying to let y'all see, but I was, like, all right, that ain't happening. Okay. So, and then here's, like, I went a little bit below that and Jaws tooled it later. But right now you're going to see me work the seal. But I was talking right through it. But that was, like, that was pretty much the most important seal and then the one on the other side. Um... And again, it was just what I keep saying. It's not easy. It's actually, like, it's pretty fucking tricky. But, like, you got to get that rim on there and then go around the rim and get it sealed on there. And then let them flow together and bring it out. And it just it just takes some time and some patience. And um, 
But that's what you're seeing me do here, man. I'm just I'm putting what heat I think I need is in there to like bring that in to a nice nice seal. I'm making sure none of those holes got fucked up. All those holes look great. You'll see me like show it later and you can see right into it. And then I think I take it outside actually. Because like I said, I jawsed it off after this. And it got a little weird. It was it was just off a bit, so I just lapped it down. No big deal. Ideally, you're going to like do the seal or whatever and saw it off and lap the ends and then repeat that process. And like I'm not certain this is how he does it, but like if you look on like Gordo's page, man, you see he's got like eight of these things stacked, you know, in the thing. I think it's because he's probably making like eight caps or ten caps at a time and then sawing off the rest of the tubing, you know, lapping each one down and then repeating that process. I'm not certain about that, but that's my theory here. And that's the way I'd go about it. Because, that makes sense. Yeah, so here, here's where, like, I'm trying to, uh, and it wasn't bad, you know? It's just, like, I do think my Jaws tools, I got to replace the wheel because I haven't been getting the cleanest brakes lately, and that tool is usually gold. So there we go. And it was it wasn't bad, but it was like just a little angled and I don't want that. I want this to look like pretty straight. So here it is. Okay guys, this I I I like I have my little my daughter hold a little bit of this just so you can see how I'd see that man, look at this. I'm going like just gently moving around, barely any pressure, keeping it uh, flush with the lap wheel and then moving it around. Ideally, you can, if you have a chip, you can do all these moves at the same time. But this, I've got a big handle on it, so it's difficult. I'm just trying to, like, Mike, What's that? Can you uh, talk briefly uh, about the, uh, the, the lap wheel there? Yeah, it's basically a disc with certain grits. And I took it because there was That's barely any, anything to move. I took it to like a 380 and just removed that material, and then what you saw there was the 600, just just a quick 600. And from the 600, it can go to the flame. If I had a lot of material to remove, or I was like dealing with a saw cut, I would go to a 180, and then to the 360, and then the 600. All right, so there's a, a joint in there, and I just I jaws that off as well, and then I just flared it a bit. I think I'm gonna check the sizing, and then I'll probably flare it a little more. Just get that sizing to match. So there it is. That thing's back in the kiln. It's multi-board tubing, man. If you make it right, it's pretty easy to work with. Um, it's pretty happy. Like that section right there um, with the like the martini or whatever. Like it's not a martini yet, but the, with the bowl. Um, that I let that bench cool, actually, and then lapped it down and stuff. Like that, it's, you know, I, I, I probably kneeling flamed it or whatever. But Okay, so here I'm going back in on that little lip. Just going in there with my tweezer jacks and getting a, a slightly more flare on it. And Mike, uh, on the lap wheel, uh, what is the brand name and like where can people find those? That's an all you need eight inch by High Tech Diamond. Um, Kingsley North sells them. Um, just you can Google it down. Um, that's a good little lap wheel, man. I like that brand. People who do a lot of polishing recommended it to me. They basically beat those into the ground for like a couple of years or whatever, and then they just buy another. That's how much they like that little machine. There's ones but made by like a Merrillap or something, I forget the brand name, that are similar, but like uh, people like those, they break down, but like their parts are all more replaceable. So that's a different school of thought. I'd rather go with the one that's like built like a little tank until the day it dies that's the i see uh, yeah that's the high-tech diamond um none and of these I'll, are what's that i was gonna say i'll link that in the uh, youtube chat room for all you guys and gals out there yeah, yeah and then yeah. one thing you'll notice is that i have the diamond centered pads they have felt pads and if you're gonna polish to cerium and stuff like uh, for like an optical polish you're gonna probably mm -hmm. like go to that at the 600 and then the 1200 as well i like the 600 metal pad as long as you're gentle on it, that gives me a, a polish. And that's what I'm doing right here, actually. I'm flame polishing that that thing. I'm just gent very gently letting it heat up from the end until I see the face glow. And check it out. Look at that. Now it's like it's it's hard to see, but look at that. It's that that thing is polished, man. See that? That's polished as fuck. It looks it just it looks like nothing ever happened.
All right, so yeah, and it's the same seal here, you guys. I'm gonna go right over that lip. As I recall, this one didn't go as hot as that other one, which went surprisingly perfect. This one went a little weird, but it's no big deal. I didn't close off any holes. That's all that matters. I did have this thought, <laughs> and like, if you're truly, like, I, I, man, I don't know, you should save this until you have all the fundamentals down, in my opinion, because there's so many little random parts that rely on it, but like, if you really want to, like, if you're into this thing, man, and like, you're not fully confident in your seal, see, it didn't even look that bad, but like, to me, in person, I was like, oh, no, you know what I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> but, um, it wasn't into the holes, it was no big deal, it just gave me a little extra glass to, like, move around, you know? It's like, um, it is what it is. Uh, what the fuck was I talking about? Um, I don't know. Oh, the, yeah, man. Um, okay, I did have this thought that, like, if you're wanting to do this and you're not, like, really comfortable, confident in your seals, like, if you can't, like, do, like, a really straight seal like this and really keep it together, you know, and bring it out and have it be happy... I did think to myself, I was like, man, you know, I could have bridged this. And that might actually be easier, you know, because you could really, like, just sit that fucking multi bore right in that rim and then chase it around with a hand torch or something. So if you want to be a pussy, do that. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, just kidding, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, honestly, like, I... Bridge, bridge, bridge. Yeah, but for real, like, um... That might actually be and like if it were if I were working with like a really big section of this or something, maybe I would. Maybe I would bridge that shit up and really get that seal just just at all the perfect tolerances, you know. And that's the thing, you know, is that like like we talked about this when we were watching Justin Carter's episode where he was doing all these uh, Encalmo seals, and and he he learned this like the same way I did, like from Mattis Cookie, who does them very cold. He has those edges really happy and then, like, barely hot, and he, like, he brings them together very cold. And if they're not hat, and if it's not right on point, he just snaps it apart because they weren't, it wasn't a real seal. You could probably do that with this multi bore stuff, you know, as long as you got right in on it. But, anyways, yeah, I'm just uh, making sure that that section is nice and straight and happy, and, and we're getting there, man. Like, this is what I wanted to do. It just takes a couple of, of, sessions of letting that glass flow together blow it out let it flow together again let it come back out and and shit will be tight and now we're going to go ahead and open this thing up because i think that was pretty pretty good um a comment from the chat room mike uh yeah, carrie up? so hate us says that shirt is sick <laughs> carrie <laughs> I hope I got the right inflection with that. Carries the best. <laughs> Whoa. So I was like mad and kneeling flame on this now. I was like, I was like, holy shit, we did it. Let's kneel the fuck out of this. <laughs> <laughs> like we're not hey, taking any we'll be right back. taking any chances now. <laughs> Dark, it's darker than your graphite. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now um, it's almost like the, like the same thing I was doing on that um, on that that stock tube that we used for the uh, the sleeve or whatever. I'm gonna like put some heat right in a very segregated area. And then kind of tug it out, and it's just like, I just want that thing to have very little material there so that I can open it up and not have a bunch of weird shit to wonk, you know, cook back. I don't want to fuck with that. So, like, I'm really going to take a second here and, like, draw this out. I might even get a smaller flame on it. Maybe on, maybe not. Either way, but, like, I'm really going in on a very, see, I'm, like, right on, like, the top of the flame, and, like, I'm just dancing into it. Because I don't want that heat to spread around too much. All right. And just grab some random point handle. Just to draw away some extra glass. Just almost right down to where that shoulder or whatever, where, that, where it scoops in. Right out to about there.
And guys, the shaping on this martini slide is actually very similar to the shaping on a martini cup. You have a little more time to fuck around, though, because this is way thicker. A proper martini glass, you're going to pretty much get that shaping by, like, that's that controlled, like, a gradient of heat, you know? And the more heat's going to be on the end that goes to that small taper, right? So you're going to pretty much get the glass shaped roughly into that triangular shape. And then at the end, when you open it up, you get pretty much one chance to go in there with your jacks or your graphite or whatever you prefer you got about one shot to get in there and lift that wall out evenly with the rest and then shape the outside and you're gonna see me do that but in just some steps because here I've got a bit more glass to play with this is a this is a thick slide so I'm taking my time a little more but if this were like a thin martini cup Right about now, I'd be, like, soaking a crazy amount of heat into this thing and just, like, getting in there and just in all one move, just... In this case, man, I'm kind of taking my time, almost letting gravity, you know, kind of bring it down on other things. I just want a nice, really, really even lip. And now that it's a bit more open, I'm switching to the Jizax. And all right, and this flare, you guys, it's like all about finding that inner wall and resting against it and bringing that, the part that needs to move to it, you know, at the right timing. That balance and rhythm and timing, shit, it, it applies to everything. And um, we were pretty close at this point. But see, that's why I pre-shaped it so much, so that when it was time to open it up, the rest of it was already ready to go, and it allowed me to hold the jacks against the, the deeper part to to maintain that angle. So that that's, you know, it's, it's about having that shape kind of pre-shaped, and then when it's open and ready to go, you gotta, you gotta make your move. I was even going in on the outer edge there with the jacks. All right, and this is me, man. We're moving in on the final kind of thing here, man. Any weirdness on that outer lip because it was heated further back in when I pushed it against the back of the jacks, I was pushing anything into that whole segment. Look at that. Now we've got, like, pretty fucking clean martini shape. You know, that, that fucking straight-up angle, man. Oh shit. Extreme close up. But here's here's the opportunity for you guys to see. See all the holes are in there, man? Look at the holes. So yeah, that's what Very we're nice. talking about. Cheers, man. Thank you. Yeah, just just a fun use. Alright, now um Y'all know what I do on these show demo giveaways, man. I put the OG moss on them. So that's that's just a little <laughs> tiny bit of OG moss. <laughs> like the tiniest bit ever. <laughs> that's the littlest the littlest horn. But a horn nonetheless. So anyways, I drew a little bit of that out and um almost mixed it up a bit cuz like there's like chunks of gun mounts and shit in there. It was weird. But chunks of metal you know from the gun mount um so i'm kind of like pre-shaping this little tiny segment of glass more at the tip to thicken up because it's going to be a little tiny horn
<laughs> there was some uh there was some questioning on what a martini slide was, Mike, and uh Okay, martini slide is like 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 old school sovereignty bongs or whatever. They all had this style of slide, you know, where it's like that martini that that just that angle that you're seeing right there. Yeah. It's not quite as dramatic as like a real martini glass, you know, the super wide or whatever. But that's the style where it's like this very straight angle in. And they, they call them martini style slides. Ryan Herrera says, oh, a comb bowl? <laughs> yeah, you can call it whatever you want. But yes, okay, so I blasted that section or that, that little spot where I was going to put it and the end at the same time and then brought them together. And now I'm going to like drill a bunch of heat into the end and kind of draw it out and form the shape of the horn. And then we'll taper it out a little more, but... This is kind of the basics of this, man. So that I'm like rotating it around there on axis as best as I can. All right, so watch this shit. <laughs> Stevie Janowski says a fluted slide. <laughs> I'll go with that one. That one's, sure. that one's good. All right, so check it out. The jazz flute. See, I'm gently pulling it out, and I was, like, definitely, like, kind of tapering that heat. So, like, I pulled it up, and then as that section cooled, I started pushing it out a little bit to kind of force that little interior curve. It's kind of a feel thing, you know? It's hard to describe, but that is what it is. Like, I'm drawing it into that shape, and then as the thinner part set starts to set, you know, I'm using that section in and of itself to, to set a more graceful organic curve. It's hard to describe, but just go pull 50 of these things, and you'll know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. That'll do it. Yeah. yeah. So there we, I drew a, a little bit more out, almost like a little tiny stringer. And then I'm kind of like, mm, 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 mm. Somebody was making fun of my stringers of death, but that's what's required of of you if you really want to, like, th draw things out. And that's how Lauren Stump taught me to do it, motherfucker. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and that's cool because we didn't have one Lauren Stump mention uh, last episode at all. Did we really? That's fucking Yeah, that's cool. probably why it was cursed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where'd you uh, where'd you take your Lauren Stump class? Out at his place, actually, Stump Truck Man, out in California. Oh, nice, dude! It was it was you know, the experience of my glass life. Honestly, it was just one of the best times I've ever had. Uh, Maddie Greenthumb wants to know. Blast. Look at that thing you guys check that out. <laughs> uh, Maddie Greenthumb wants to know Dona medium cup jacks. Y yeah. They're like the eight inch cup jacks, the small ones. I don't think like they have medium cup jacks. I think the cup jacks are just one size in Carla Dona. If you want a smaller one, it's like the few in jacks, and then the next ones up are like I don't know what they're called, but but yeah, they're like eight inch cup jacks. All right, so here I'm just uh, go going in real quick with the hand torch and just cooking in where that thing connected to the piece. The angle wasn't bad or problematic at all, but we came this far. Why not take an extra two minutes and be sure? Give it that extra heat, yep. Uh, Mike, there was another question. Uh, Ryan Herrera, what, kind, what is the retail range uh, for something like this? And that also brings up another question, which came up earlier, which we all can kind of weigh in, I guess, is uh, how does one figure out uh, the the retail and wholesale uh, value of an item? I don't know, but hold on. Did, you, did anybody notice my daughter coming in totally rocking the Michael G. Check shirt? Shout outs to <laughs> Michael G. Check, one of my friends and teachers, dude. Fucking he's, Ad placement. He's, he's the best, dude. I love him. He actually, look, there's one of his stickers on my HBO system, too. See the G-Check sticker on there, you guys? Yep. He's the man. So, anyways, here I have my kid rocking his shit. Uh, we were talking about value on this. I've never actually sold one of these, so your your guess is as good as mine. Whoever wins this, sell it if you have to. $1,000. Yeah, I, I don't really know. Um, It's like, it definitely takes some time, you know, and it, it it's, man, I... I don't know exactly what, what the value of this would be. I don't even know what like a regular martini slide sells for right now. I'd probably take that value and, you know, add some money to it. So that was that. That was that, dogs. Um, Something's worth what somebody will pay for it, true. 
Yeah, and then here I'll pop that up for you guys again on the uh, the hangout screen. There it is. Nice. Yeah, man, it didn't come out so bad. Um, for those of y'all out there who still get down with your uh, your pre-run, as Johnny Benson likes to call it. <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> Johnny. <though. laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, it, man, there it is. See right into that thing. There's all the holes. Oh yeah, that makes a nice uh a nice little filter there. Yeah, man. You know, it's almost like it's got a little pillar section or something, you know. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um I like it a lot. I think this is a, a classy piece of kit or whatever. And yeah, you know, like people who are into their flowers and stuff, you know, they they love a little novelty to it. And uh, I think that's certainly cool. It's like the airflow on it is like and there's crazy airflow to it, and that that's the whole point, you know. Like, um, uh, who is it? Like the leisure guys. Um, who am I thinking, dude? Who am I talking about? The two brothers. Damn, I'm drawing a blank right now. But they run the leisure smokeware company. Ben Wilson and Luke Wilson. That's who I'm mm. thinking of. Uh, they do like um, a similar type of slide where it has a like um, I forget what it's like a they, I forget what they call it, but it has like a ton of little drawn stringers in or whatever to the middle that's another type of one of these things where it's like it's got a webbing. glass what's that webbing it's almost well no it's not like web but it's it's yeah it's kind of like a web they they all shoot into the middle um i could probably find one on the internet actually um but the whole idea is that you have it's filtered nothing's gonna really like just plow through or whatever but um you have a ton of airflow. So it's like way more airflow than you could get from a constriction style. Man, look at this. I popped the website up and it's the first thing that's there. Check this out. There it is. They call it a disc screen slide. <laughs> screen slide. Yeah. Hmm. So I get a picture into the screen. Come on, man. There you go. That's what I'm talking. So like this, for example, is another style that allows you to, to pack this thing full of your tree and get way more airflow than just one little hole here in the center and some people really like that so that's a bit of the idea there um any questions <laughs> what's going on will i have no questions uh other than, you know, the question for how to retail and wholesale price your work. I mean, oh, yeah, uh, okay. a lot of people use the, the dollar a minute kind of vibe. Uh, you know, some people increase or decrease that depending on materials or their level of, uh, you know, uh, level of skill and level of complexity of the object. You know, all that factors in pricing your work, I think, is like we talk about it quite a lot here on the show. We always kind of come to the same consensus that it's kind of a personal thing. Uh, it, like like Adam said, whatever it'll sell for. Um, you or know, your day rate, too. The day rate. You come yeah, back to your the, day rate. How much, you know, if you're going to spend eight hours in the shop, how much are you going to make? And then split that up amongst your product that you can make in that eight hours. And uh, if you're good enough and you're not making janky shit, you uh, will possibly get it. Right. <laughs> That's what everybody's aiming for, the day rate, you know? Yeah. I'm not going to name any names here, but a really famous artist once told me when I asked him about this, them, maybe it was a woman. I don't know. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> Being too specific already. But no, they told me they were like, yo, just price it as high as until you feel personally disgusted. So, like, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> Wow, I need I need to up my rate a little bit. See what I'm saying? No, like for real. You need to, but like, but like, yo, I don't think they're wrong. Actually, there's some very sincere truth to that. That is not for like the guy who just started, you know, and like doesn't have any fucking sea legs and isn't producing products that are, you know, somewhat unique or interesting or you know. But because like, if you price it that way, the next guy is gonna undercut you just like that. But if you know if you're making something unique, and you know you know it 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 speaks to, to, to development process, and you know you're not just taking an idea and pumping them out or whatever, 
at that point, it you do get to dictate the price. And I don't know, like, it's everything I just said. It sits on the shelf, too. Yeah. You know, uh, if you have something sitting on the shelf for six months and you're hungry, yeah, you priced it a little high. Yeah, you know, it's um, <laughs> but let let's talk about let's let's talk about some shit. I mean, this is a show for flame workers, man. This is not a show for customers. Very few collectors are tuning in, and if you are, man, you know, I don't think this is gonna come as a giant surprise to you. Maybe you can apply this information in your own way. But look. I'm not prepared to back this up with studies or anything right now. Maybe I should. But there's like this this thing if you ha you could have something amazing and beautiful and if you price it too low, people are just simply not going to accept the idea that it's something unique and special. Do you understand? I agree. If you price it at 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 your, you know, this at the same old rate or whatever, man, if you're like, man, well, I, it's a pendant. How much more can I expect to get? Or da 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 da. You put it up at seventy five dollars, and then, you know, I, I, I'm hesitant to like get deep on this, but like one of my own products that I was something unique, something really unique, and I was selling them pretty cheap, and and they they were moving, but like not as, and I just I was like what, and. I, you know, like I, I was out at like a shop for a glass thing or whatever, and I, I showed them to these guys, and they immediately offered me wholesale double what I was selling them for retail, right off, oh. right out the gate, and that, and I instantly realized how much I had fucked up, and I, that's what cued me into this, this whole idea, and I mean it's, it's, it's weird to say, and it's, it's, you know what I mean, because it's like, we're talking about. But we're talking about the premium that you sincerely deserve for making a unique fucking product that, you know, that somebody's going to be proud to own and... Right. Well, people want to spend a lot of money Dude, yeah. on the best of things. I know. It's you like... Know? If it's not expensive, then it's obviously not the best, right? Yes. And, dude, it's it's it, this is hard to get into because it's like, oh, this is maybe not part of the thing that I ever wanted to be involved with. But at the same token, man, like your fucking unique thing will sit because you were afraid to price it at what it deserved and where it needs to be. And I don't know. I, it's... I, I guess it's a tough thing to talk about, but man, I, I, I say this because you know that this advice came to me from somebody I really respect, somebody who knows what they're talking about, and I see it play out. I've seen it play out in my own experience since then, and I've seen it play out in the market. And if you had, this isn't you can't do this if somebody you know five hundred other people are making the same thing. If China could turn around and knock you off. When they see you getting what you deserve, man, that's when they step in. But if you have something that's really hard to knock off and unique, and something that really speaks to a unique skill set or a developed skill set, man, don't be afraid to, to put that out there, man, at what you really believe in your heart you deserve. That's what this gets to, you know what I mean? Because like that, that borderline between like where you're like, this is fucked up, and this is right, is that borderline between like what you think you deserve and what you think you don't deserve. So like go all the way out to what you think you deserve, and and yeah. But the problem with with artists, uh, they're they're so self loathing, you know. And you see every mistake in their work, <laughs> so they're like, oh, it's worth you know ten bucks, you know, of course, you know. But they don't see it through the purchaser's eyes too, you know. So yeah, well, that's a whole nother topic, you know. Is this like objectivity? And yeah, we definitely we all see the flaws in our work. I'll I'll share something that Emilio Santini told me. He he was talking about those flaws that we see in our work and that we see in others' work. Those are oftentimes the things that make it special to a consumer. And what Emilio Yeah, what Emilio said was that we should never point out those flaws to anybody but other glass artists, other glass workers. Don't ever, ever point out a flaw like that to a consumer. It, it, it never fails. The, the ugliest piece in your case is always the one everyone likes. You know? Right, yeah. All, all you're doing is taking away the magic for them. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if they go buy a torch and they, you know, they get into this world, great. We can talk about the flaws and whatever piece on your shelf. But, like, me personally, you know, I, this was very early on. This is when I was learning with Mattis Skooky, who was, like, my first proper teacher after I was an apprentice with Mike Lewis. So this was really early on, and, and that one stuck with me, man. Like, I will never discuss, you know, any negative aspect of glass with you know with somebody who's just a collector or you know like they don't need to know about those details that we find offensive you know if it's if it's stru if it's like unstructurally sound i might have to just be like all right look this is problematic but if it's structurally sound and it's like some weird kinkiness or this or the that dude how many people are turning a piece around man and like inspecting the maria did that that's only us for real and 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 if they did that they'd be like oh hell yeah machine didn't make this you know what I mean? Like right. for real. Like don't ever take that mystique and that magic away from a customer or a consumer. Only discuss flaws in glass with other glass artists. And like I said, that comes straight from Emilio Santini, and uh, I I endorse the fuck out of that for real. Like we, it's that's not our place. Good advice. And yeah, advice. and then we need to take a little bit of that too into our own perspective as we're, you know, being self-conscious about our own work and, you know, and, and it's, it's tough, you know, but you got to step back and, and abstract yourself from like what we're seeing as, as like a glass technician, you know, or whatever, you know, we're grading our own work or whatever. Oh, it's a 98, man. I can't, how the fuck, dude. It's like, no, 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 man. That's trust me. That was 110 to the, to the customer, you know, like, whatever so yeah just just a bit of rambling there but yeah like a, as a general <laughs> notion definitely like don't point those flaws out so, and, and maybe so how much do i charge for this you know that i just made what's that that <laughs> well i mean i don't know what is it on uh, yeah. <laughs> so what is <laughs> is it slime definitely a thousand dollars is it a rig or a thousand dollars of slime yeah, yeah. yeah it's slime I... <laughs> <laughs> I know my slime I, won't, uh, I, I don't know. I've been trying to get through this stuff. I bought a bunch of sackers. And, uh, I can't use it for anything but just by itself. So I've been doing a little sketch, a little figurine with it. You know. Awesome. That's cool, man. Yeah. I think um, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't price that solo, but I think that. Well, would, I'll put that on something. Yeah, that would add that significant while, while value. Well, I'm sorry, man. I, right. Would you say, Adam? I was talking <laughs> over you by accident. I said I made this while while the show was going on, actually. What? Yeah. It was like a secret sculpture demo. Y'all didn't even know oh, about man. it. Yeah, that, that <laughs> only uh, we got to see behind the scenes. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, were well, there we'll any um, questions? That one day, if were you there... want. What, what? Yeah, you should, do that. you should do that shit like another week or whatever. Okay. Yeah, about that life. And then, and then it'll be worth like three times. <laughs> yeah, I've actually... I've actually tried this with the, with the shops. I'm like, well, this was made on a Torch Talk demo. And they're like, yeah, no. <laughs> I did that and it worked. <laughs> it didn't work for me, man. No, I mean, I'll up, pay triple. But it, it gets back to like that thing that I was talking about. Like, just, it is what it is, man. I have really good relationships with the shops that I deal with, man. Like, I respect them and they respect me. You know, like when I ask for a price, that's the price. And so when I ask for more, it, it gets really tough, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's bad, but you know that's that, that's what you got to do. Um, that, you know, it's just it is what it is. But yeah, so no, the torch talk bonus, man, that was <laughs> that shit wasn't that shit wasn't gonna cut it. <laughs> All right, okay. Hey, thanks for inviting me, dude. Man, blast. Pleasure to have you, man. Hell yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah it's been nice to have you, man. That's it's always a pleasure. Uh, we met. I met Adam for the first time at Glass Vegas, I think. Uh, in person, yeah. Yeah. In person, well, yeah. I think we ran into each other probably at a lift three. I, I have a feeling because I, I was at three of them. We just didn't know each other. Is that it? We maybe maybe that's yeah. the case, Adam. If so, man, that's too bad. I met so many people. Like I feel like I was just meeting people constantly. So it wasn't for any like introversion on my part. It, I know it's just there's too many people. Oh, there's just so many people there. Yeah. Yeah, that was great, man. I, I don't think Derek Weaver was ever there while I wasn't there. Okay, in that case, yeah, maybe we were. Um, dude, was do we were you was it the year when um, 
when Jason was like putting dynamite into the barrels and lawn, like fucking lighting them off? Maybe, maybe or not. Maybe I slept through that. I don't it know. It would have been like you could. No, nobody slept through that, <laughs> dude. Those things would shoot up. They would. It was like a bomb. Where I was like, boom, and the motherfucker would shoot up like fifty feet in the air, like spinning around and shit. And it was like in slow motion or something. I don't, it was weird. It was like. Boom! And it would just be floating up in the air and floating up in the air and floating up in the air and then it would float back down, dude. And he, he was lighting them off like all morning one day. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> it was too cool. You definitely didn't sleep through that. So, yeah. Yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. Never, fair enough, fair enough, yeah. Depends on how many hours uh, he had been awake before that. So. Yeah, oh, hold on. Was it the year that Elbow and... Um, uh, they made the uh, flamethrower? El- well, no, I don't think I made a flamethrower, but Elbow was there and Amir Sean from Lampwork yeah. Supply, and they were DJing. Yes. Okay, then that was that. That was that year, dude. Fucking Elbow, yeah, <laughs> DJ uh, Elbow, I, I and actually, I actually get up and demoed in the little shop, and uh, I, I actually did a couple little figurines. Uh, oh, really? Like, yeah, like a little one out of like some, yeah, uh, uh, I don't know. They had some fade to black hair. Remember samples? It was just out. It was like a new. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember yep, that. It was a new talent. I remember it yeah. caused some problems with the Elbow and Jason Lee collaboration, actually. Oh, and really? I didn't catch that. I didn't catch yeah, it. it was like the next morning it came out of the kiln, and I happened to be there when everybody was looking at it. I took some. It was crazy. I took some footage of it, and then like I don't know. I don't actually. I'm almost. I'm, I almost regret bringing this up, but since we brought it up, I, there was some misunderstanding about the piece, and like right. th- like they were like. Does anybody have pictures? And I was like, actually, I do. I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to get in the middle of this shit, you know. But like, <laughs> I actually do have pictures, as a matter of fact, you know what I mean? But I, yeah. Anyways, I don't know what what happened. Everything worked oh, out. That's Every- right. I remember that. Yeah, everything was cool. There. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was cool in the end. But yeah, I remember that that those pictures had come up. But yeah, no, like the fade to black had caused some issues with the wings or something, and. But I don't know, in the end, I think they were able to fix it and get it sold up. The shit was sick, man. It had like milli chip feet, you know, this little pterodactyl rig that Jason yeah. Lee and Elbow collaborated on. It was fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah it what, was nice. What a great time that was, man. Yeah, I, uh, I regret not making it up there in, in the years since. Um, it just hasn't been. Now he just kind of has the barbecue, you know. It's, uh, yeah, it's a little really more low key, down, but know. you know that's no reason to not be there, man. That's it seemed like it was the same good vibe and. Oh, yeah, I think it was even better. Yeah, nice, man. It was Well, Jason was less occupied, you know? It seems like he got to enjoy himself a lot more. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah, like, the whole family was pretty much occupied with putting it on and such, and, you know, you'd almost have to catch them when they were, like, off-duty or just for a minute sitting down or whatever to actually be able to engage with them. But, you know, it's that's what it is when you're the people helping to put on the event, you know? It's, it's like some of these... Yeah. Are, some of these events we've been to, you know, like Las Vegas and Melt and Gas, it's, you know, no regrets or, you know, not no complaints. Right. I don't mean this in a negative way, but it's a different experience when you're there with the responsibility to help share it or to, um, you know, to, to just be, be part of putting it on. So it's a, it's a different thing. And you know, I wonder what's going to fill the vacuum of the DFO now since the DFO is not happening. Uh yeah, I'm not tuned into that like at all. So, like that is, I don't really know. Good question. No, no really good question. Yeah, that's a big vacuum. I mean, that thing was huge. Have you ever been to one of them? Never. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Oh man, they're they're pretty crazy. Okay. <laughs> nice. They're pretty crazy. A whole block, you know, they take up a whole block. It was just, uh, it was insane, overwhelming. Really? Yeah. Wow. That sounds fucking sweet. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was. Right. Yeah. Nice. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Damn. Yeah. Something. <laughs> but yeah. Um. Well, fuck yeah. Uh. We got anything else, you guys? Were there more questions in the chat? I haven't been able to see the chat because I'm like. I haven't seen any questions come through. Uh. So. Yeah. For those of you, uh, for Ryan Herrera, there is a who's who's the guy you're talking to as well. That's Adam Sims. Yeah. That's Adam Sims. You guys can follow him. Uh, because the the intro was a little bit audio less. Yeah. Uh, sorry. There's a setting not right. On on Instagram, you can find Adam at Sims underscore Adam, like you yeah. would in a phone Two book. Two M's yeah. on the Sims. <laughs> Two M's on the Sims, yeah. Two M's on the Sims. So y'all can find him there. 
and follow his work and uh definitely want to be doing that checking out his stuff so mike yeah uh, as we kind of close things out here yeah we, we were uh, gonna what's give the this, fate of this thing we're giving this motherfucker away are we? Uh, All right. Yeah. Uh, so, so how many people uh, are in there right now? How many people have stuck with I us to the bitter end? Forty-six watch watchers at the current moment. Forty-six. Oh, yeah, watch me enjoy this Milky Way. There you go. This boy's hungry. <laughs> Can you enjoy an entire galaxy? Delicious. Yes. I, it's just I can't talk now. That was a that was a, <laughs> that, was a, that was a mistake. <laughs> no. Um. All right. Everybody, pick a number. 1 through 100. Make sure nobody else has picked this number. Only pick one number. We'll pick more numbers if nobody guesses the number. I'm going to tell Will in the Hangout. Damn, how am I supposed to do I'm going to tell Will on Facebook what the number is. I. Right now. I'm not looking at the chat. I can't see anything. Oh, <laughs> Will was hitting me up when the shit was frozen. Sorry, dude, I didn't have Facebook open. Um, I was like, whoa! <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! All right, I've sent Will the number. Got it. That number is now set in stone. If somebody guesses it, great. If not, we're going to do another guessing round. But go ahead and get those guesses in now. And the numbers floweth this fucking... like milk and honey. This cool ass multi bore <laughs> slide. This thing's fun, man. I stopped by uh, Papa Joe's earlier, and I was showing some of the homies there, man. They're just like, they're like, weird. <laughs> you know, like you you could tell when when something's a truly positive reaction. It's just like, all right, yeah, this is people, people like this. <laughs> it's fun, man. It's it's like <coughs> I don't know. It's just a bit of that that new new with that old old, and I like it a lot. So get your guesses in, and I guess we'll stop at a certain point and let everybody guess another number if we don't see that number. I'm not watching the chat, so you're... I'm watching the chat, yeah. and uh, you're depending on Will to notify me when somebody guesses this. Shit. Angel, Angel, and Walt uh, put in like seven numbers back to back, so <laughs> they're <laughs> cheaters. Yeah, only your first number counts, brother. That's it. I don't know. I'm like. Technically, we should disqualify you for that. Technically. Yeah. Don't fuck it's around. in the lottery. <laughs> it's not like you get all six numbers. They're just playing their lottery numbers, their favorite ones. Right. Okay, so far, the numbers seem to be slowing down now. So people, there's more people watching yeah, than have access to, was, like to a keyboard, I think. Don't even know it. And I'm looking, and I do not see your number. All right, everybody guess the second number. They're just playing their lottery numbers, their favorite one. Are you going to message me the, 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 the number, Mike? No, it's the same number, man. We're looking for the same number. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Gotcha. Same number, but... Everyone gets a second guess. So, Angel and Walt, we'll use your second guess for that one. How about that? So, Angel and Walt's guess is 73. There we go. Yo. Don't use 73, y'all. I see a pertinent question. I actually do have the chat open now. Um, the Siebler Elf asks, I was wondering what the color names of the glass that shipped in the last sticker packs were. Let me show you all something. For my hunger fun subscribers out there, y'all are the best. Um, what I I always update the pack subscription page with the colors. So oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, man, why does this page have such light color type? But anyways, I update them every month. So like April's packs had sunset orange, Amazon bronze, North Star yellow, and North Star star white, and um. I appreciate the kind words about the honeycomb in there. Yeah, man, I made um I made a 19 cell serum honeycomb. And I don't know if you guys could make I don't think that'll show up or whatever, but maybe if I can make the camera. Where's that webcam controller? There it is. All right, here we go. Hold on. I might actually be able to make this work. Come on, controller. Oh, 
Oh shit, oh shit. Okay. There we go. Check that out, y'all. That's a 19 cell serum honeycomb. Nice. So, yeah, um, honestly, when you encase it, the serum is like pretty much out the window. Honestly, you don't see it as much, but like when it's not encased or if you encase it on something light, you can definitely see like you can see it right even now, man, like all the color in the middle. That's all the serum or whatever. So it's, Foggy Marsh Low Ohms wants to know: Does that ship international? Um, we we do actually have. Uh, there's like a few countries in there. If somebody wants to subscribe and they're in a country that we don't have, like just holler at me personally, and I'll probably set it up for you. Um, but like the international rates are pretty much set up for a whole bunch of countries. Yeah, you can get those. And yeah, I mean it's a fun deal. You get um like. Uh, a bunch of color samples every month three or four it depends on the month and like how much the colors are and all that shit and and each one comes with like a, a bonus item some kind of prep item like eye cane honeycomb cane like some months i've even shipped like tubing ends if i could get enough of them at a good deal and stuff yeah so like they're fun and you get all the new stickers we try to print at least one sticker a month um months when we're able to do special packs like um for example, like the short packs, like when I'm able to get those North Star short bundles, we do short packs that come with a whole bunch of shorts. Basically, you know, just, just fill the motherfuckers up. Um, you know, if we have packs that bring in a bunch of extra money, those are the months when we do like three or four stickers. But most months, we're able to print a new sticker. We have one on the way. I'll pop that up for you guys. Y'all probably saw it in the group, though. It's a good one. Um, we probably need to let them guess another number, Mike. I think the numbers have basically uh, stopped rolling in, so everybody's basically guessed. I did not see a correct guess. That one, that one's already off to the printer, you guys. So, I know, I know some of y'all were enjoying that meme. I, th I man, I saw this before it even got posted in Torch Talk, <laughs> and I was sharing it with the moderators and shit. It's fucking great. So, it yeah. is pretty good. Yeah, that one's on the way, dogs. That's gonna be in the new packs. Um. I don't know when it'll get here. It's already like being printed, so at some point. Um, so nobody got that number on the second round. Is that right? No, there was some very close guesses out there, but all right. Well, alas, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Yeah, go for another number, y'all. It's <laughs> round three. Round three. Ding, ding, ding. And they're off. Yeah, Siebler Elf says, you know, you want to send some stickers over? I'd love that. Um, the packs are definitely democratic, dude. We don't, like, you know, as long as it's nothing, don't, be, don't send me over no white nationalist shit or something. I don't, I don't think that's our <laughs> that's our crowd, but, you know what I mean? Like, for example, dude, somebody once sent me, um, they sent me these, these alien stickers, and, like, I had to look it up because it was, like, an alien, like, all crossed out or whatever. It was, like, no aliens. I was like, is this an immigration thing? Uh, like, I got to make sure. And I looked it up, and it was just some crazy conspiracy alien thing. So it was all good. But <laughs> as long as it's, like, not something weird, man, um, yeah, send that shit over. Um, nothing, you know, and we'll put them in. Um, all you know, you don't got to gotta be somebody special or any weirdness like that. Um, the numbers are flowing. We've got some fairly close guesses here, but nothing dead on yet. Nothing uh, where it needs to be. Man, it's pretty It's pretty funny how they've guessed like virtually every number. Yeah, usually this is like, bam. Uh, <laughs> but the but number. <laughs> sometimes it's hard. It's hard to guess numbers. There's so many numbers. <laughs> so little time. <laughs> All right, what's up, guys? Come on. I know somebody's got this. I almost want to give a hint, <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> There's no how. Hint. Give a hint. <laughs> it's like a really cool numbers neighbor. Yeah. Will's, like, privately messaging uh. Carrie the number. Like, <laughs> come on. We'll split it. <laughs> Joint custody. Wesley, we're giving away the slide that was just made on the show, actually. So you should guess a number one to a hundred. And everybody else, go ahead and guess another number, man. Fuck it. Y'all are 
No, no, yeah. no, Stevie. Yeah. Uh, no, Stevie. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Stevie, no. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie's a good. Stevie's hilarious, man. He, yeah, he's dude, always shout out Stevie. chat. Shout out I mean, Stevie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, come I on. I see I see where everybody's I see where everybody's at. I see, uh, I see a close one, man. So close. Man, yeah, I see I see so, a lot of people are guessing the same number though. What are you doing? Yeah, God. Stop it. <laughs> Two fourteens back to back. Damn everybody's on sixty eight. <laughs> hmm. Man. Well, I think we have a winner, Mike. Do, whoa, 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 do we Oh shit, demented glass. That's you, baby. Wait, 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 wait. No, That's no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on, hold on. Siebler Elf? I uh, see the better. Siebler Elf. I see yeah. Siebler Elf first. They all went in series, man. See, this is why you can't pick one that somebody else just picked. You fucking confusing me. <laughs> I think I think my I think my tip gave it gave it away, which was a, a really cool numbers neighbor. Look at that. Everybody's <laughs> like 70, 70, ha <laughs> ha, 69. <laughs> 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 all right, I think that's you, Siebler Elf. You are I think yeah. You're, you're in the house, dude. Um, that's what I've got. That's what I've got as well. Hell yes. All right, Siebler Elf. Um, I don't know exactly who you are. You mentioned you're one of my subscribers, though, so I already have your address. But uh, contact me. Well, hold on. Nickname one says I'm above them. So this is why I hate doing giveaways, because there's like always a fucking problem. I am seeing Siebler Elf on my screen above Nick's name one and above Demented Glass. That's what I'm seeing. That's how you got to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, but I mean, I want to hear, Will, that's what you're seeing too, right? Well, let's see. How far does he think he – no, yeah, in, on my – and I'll screen share it on my screen. Yeah, uh, I can screen share it too if I have to here as well. Yeah, actually. we're, yeah, we're going to do it that. Is. See what I'm saying, y'all? Yeah. Sorry, guys. I mean, this is what we have, so this yeah. is how we have to go. That's what I'm and seeing, nickname, yeah. it, could, it could look like on your screen that, you know, you do have the the winning spot, but here, like on my screen, Mike, I don't know if I'm up or whatever. But uh, uh, I can put you up. Hold on. Man. Let's get double confirmation here. Yeah, where two or more are gathered. Yeah, see, there it is, man. Both keys have been turned. Siebler Elf, you are the winner. Yep. Nickname. That, that's a great guess. The Minted Glass, uh, you got third place. Uh, and then I think we had some people down here. Let's see. Yeah. Nicknames one and the Great. other guy. Finally got it. Shoot, shoot. <laughs> All three of you shoot me your addresses. I got sticker packs for the other two of y'all who guessed the there same number at the same time. So... There you go. Demented glass. There you go. Demented, Demented glass. glass Nick's I got name. you. And Nick's name one. I got you too, baby. But the Siebler Elf is the winner of the fucking the slide that y'all just got saw made. So the Martini slide. The Martini slide, baby. That's coming out to you. So get your pre-run ready. <laughs> bust, bust out your finest mids. Not your finest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something we can all be proud of. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, man, I. Dare I say that's probably a dank place to end it, right? I I'm tempted so, to man. fill this motherfucker right up and just be like, but, and then mail it to him. Uh, yeah, Pat. mail it to him all dirty. Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry, sorry, <laughs> no, that we didn't use that. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I think you're right, Mike. That's a great place to 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 uh, call it an evening. Uh, what a great demo! It was oh, a dude. great demo last night, Thanks, man. Um, and it was even better tonight somehow, which is crazy. Well, cheers, but man. you guys, um, you guys got to see it tonight live for, for some of y'all that might missed it yesterday uh, because of Twitch, and now oh. it will be uh, forever on YouTube for posterity. So yeah, and it's uh, fucking even better. So I'm pretty yeah, and you yeah, can... I'm I'm pretty stoked. Will, Adam, Chuck, thank you guys for joining me tonight. Um, will just blame Twitch, but the reality is that I set the show up not realizing that the archiving wasn't on, so that it's really on me. And it's really a kindness that all my homies jumped right back in, you know, like jumped right back in the shit with me tonight uh, to put on the show for you guys. And uh, I mean, I felt bad that post was there. Were so many people that were excited to see this and had me feeling a certain kind of way. And, you know, if I can fix that sort of thing, I, I fucking will. So here we are. Fuck yeah. Everything is right with the universe. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'll go ahead and give you all the. Bruce the chest buffer. Bump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah good Adam, night, everybody. Adam, thanks for joining us. Uh, yep, and shout out to Adam. Guys. Yep. Uh, 
all the guys in the in the chat room. Chuck, again, thank you for being here, man. And, no we'll, see you all, and we'll see y'all next Tuesday, guys, right here. Uh, and uh, we might have a special guest next week. So hopefully oh we'll shit, that's right. Oh, yeah. So exciting times. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Y'all hey, be good. Good night.